So if I gave you $215, what car would you buy? Before you guys answer, let me show you what I'm driving today. Meet the Mercedes-Benz SL65 AMG. My name is Sarah Sawyer or Sarah Sauer and you are watching another episode of FLD Tours. So what does $215,000 get you today? It gets you a gorgeous Roadster, an SL65 AMG with a handcrafted engine, of course. It's a 6-liter V12 twin-turbo engine making 621 horsepower and about 738 pound-foot of torque. Looks-wise, I am not too sure if the SL65 AMG is rather eye-catching or not. I'm not quite sure about it. But what I have experienced is that especially children react to this car. It often happened to me that they were like stopping, looking, then Wah! and then like, Miss, can I take a picture of this car and send it to my daddy? <laughs> so this is what I've experienced, which I think is pretty sweet. Let's talk about the AMG specific details. The front, you know, the entire front is like AMG sharpened and you recognize it by its double chrome line here in the grille and of course by its AMG badge and by the LED running daylights here in the front. They're not fully LED equipped as we know them from the uh, new CLS or new S-Class, but you know, with the next generation, this might come. Now, maybe you might want to help me out a little because here upon the hood, there's something that in German we call Finnen. I've tried my very best to find the English translation, but you know, just failed. So here are those chrome finnen or applications with air outlets and you find those finnen and chrome applications here at the side as well. This SL65 AMG stands on 19 inch alloy wheels. As standard they come with 5 spokes alloy wheels but in this version we have 10 spokes alloy wheels and what we have as an option here are those carbon ceramic brakes. For the amount of money you pay for those brakes, you can buy, you know, like a brand new car in Germany at least. I don't know about you in the States, for example, but here you can. So they cost $8,950 extra. The back of the SL provides a spoiler lip and you find of course the AMG exhaust system that provides you know the specific V12 sound. It takes around 17 seconds until the roof is you know fully gone. Let's talk about the trunk. You can open it here via button or via your key and now here is you already see it here's the part of the roof that moves and this is I think a neat function because you know um, with this function it is more easy to store up your luggage into the trunk and you can also activate this by this little button here it's an easy pack system you can store up to 241 liters in the trunk when the roof is open and part of the roof is in the trunk and um, without the roof open when you're not driving topless haha i can already imagine your comments <laughs> you could store up to 381 liters in this trunk No more words about the trunk. I mean, this is a roadster. You want to know how it drives, how it looks like. So I will get into the SL65 AMG. Uh, 
<laughs> Sorry, it's pretty nice, you know, you get in and you see leather everywhere or even Alcantara here on the steering wheel. What makes the leather applications in this car so AMG specific is, for example, you have this diamond stitching here and of course the AMG badge on the seats as well. You can adjust them electronically, they have a massage function and um, this is something I really like. Dynamic side support, meaning those sides here who give you, you know, nice support anyway, they can blow up. Um, or no, it's not that they can, they do blow up whenever you go into a curve or you know, are swerving around a little bit, then they blow up and give you even more side support. This model, the R231, was presented just two years ago in Detroit. However, the interior, to me at least, seems to be a little bit outdated. This is probably due to the fact that with the new C-Class and the new S-Class, Mercedes-Benz introduced an entire all-new design language regarding the interior. And maybe this is because we are a little bit spoiled. For example, the infotainment display here in the center is, for me, too small. And what I really, really miss in this car, especially as this car is so fast and so powerful, is a head-up display. What are two important factors for, you know, joyful driving in a roadster? I think number one is that you don't start to freeze, that you're not getting cold. And this car is equipped with a so-called air scarf function, meaning there is a neck level heating system and the head restraints. Like there is a little fan and, you know, it blows warm air to your shoulders and your neck. It even adjusts to your driving speed. Very nice. What else do we need? Ah, wind blocker, of course, and at the touch of a button, a mesh screen rises and helps to calm the draft. First of all, I have to tell you that be careful when you push, when you depress the throttle because this little beast here, this tiger, just wants to jump away. This is like the first thing I've learned and realized. Just be careful. There are four drive modes, comfort and the sport, sport plus and manual. When you drive in comfort mode, you can already hear the V12, Sport Plus, it's like a little explosion in there, <laughs> in the front, in the hood, and from the back, you know, as the flaps from the Expo system open, and the star, uh, the star, the car starts, uh, yeah, you guys out there, you, <laughs> you say farting. I say spitting and backfiring and you already know, at least if you watch my videos, that I love this sound. What I really love about this car, and I think I always, I'm always saying this whenever I'm driving a Mercedes-Benz, is braking because braking is very precise. And this is at least what I expect from those brakes, as those are the AMG ceramic brakes and you have to pay extra for them, they're very precise, so once you hit the pedal, you immediately feel the efficiency. So awesome job there. There's one little thing I do not like that much. It's not too bad, but still I want to mention it. The seven-speed transmission. Sometimes shifting is a little bit abrupt. It's just not smooth enough for my taste, especially when you're driving through city traffic. I mean, this car is agile. It's just, you know, that shifting then is a little bit mm, uncomfortable, especially when you're driving in the Sport Plus mode. You do not want to drive in this mode when you're in a city, but you do want to drive in this mode, mode when you are on the Autobahn, and then you never want to stop, I promise. So at the end of the day, what you're really paying for is the V12 engine and the beautiful, powerful K5 
head, which is actually not too bad. So let me pick up again the question from the very beginning. What if I gave you $215,000, what car would you buy? Would you buy this SL65 AMG or would you prefer any other car? Just let me know in the comment section below. Personally, I would buy an SLS AMG because I like it just a little more. So you were watching another episode of FOD Tours. My name is Sarah Sawyer and I hope to see you next time. Bye. So it was in 1959, the whole name. My name is Sarah Sawyer. When you drive faster, then it is blowing harder. This is very nice. Oh, nee, das sage ich nicht. Ich sage nicht blowing harder. <laughs> Ow, we're living in the fast lane, baby.